to use them in the dog. Hi guys. It is a refreshingly rainy but warm almost summer night here uh, in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Where it is 65 degrees on November, on Friday, November 11th, 2022. 65 degrees here uh, in New York, baby. Of course, it will be 22 on Sunday night, and the uh, first snow will be <coughs> blowing in next week. So we will see how all that goes. But since it is Friday, 11 11 22 I love those numbers 11 11 22 it is time to do what we do every Friday Sancho Panza's favorite yes time of the week this is time for our ecological meltdown roundup rant where we simply head over to mongabay.com to see what's on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls as they bring to us their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe taking down this <coughs> collapsing planet and I'm glad to see that uh, Rhett is not talking very much or a few articles about the dog and pony show that we do not mention over at this channel. We are boycotting the dog and pony show for being the, uh, for, you know, you know why we're boycotting it. Same reason Greta Thunberg is boycotting it. Uh, but anyway, so we will have a dog and pony free descent into collapse and see all the other ways the planet is collapsing this week and I'm gonna let the little dog get back to getting his mousey. There seems to be a mouse has moved into the tiny house. And we have a mouse in the house. Alright guys, maybe this is part of, you know, November 15th on Tuesday is when you know, supposedly this planet's going to hit 8 billion people. And uh, I don't know what kind of show I'll have on Tuesday. So I don't know if this is part of that or not. Uh, but anyway, we finally have some good news coming out of the middle of nowhere. We're going to go out to Tetaroa Atoll in French Polynesia where we have a human eradication program remakes a tropical atoll. Like many islands and everywhere else around the world. Man, what is going on with my glasses? Like many islands, you know, such as continent-sized islands around the world, Tetaroa Atoll in French Polynesia has been overrun by humans and other invasive species that profoundly affect its terrestrial and marine ecosystems. In July, the paradisiacal 12-island atoll was declared human-free after years of concerted efforts to wipe out the predators. Yes. Scientists have been studying the atoll's plants, seabirds, insects, lizards, crabs, coral, and even algae, establishing a uniquely comprehensive ecological baseline to better understand how the human eradication will affect the atoll and others like it. All right. Oh, obviously, guys, that was a joke. They were talking about rats, not humans. But, you know, I, I like to, uh, you know, read the news like I was talking to any other species of our fellow Earthling on the planet. And that, of course, would be the greatest news on the planet, a human eradication zone. But anyway, good for getting rid of the rats. That's a 
that's a step in the right direction, getting rid of the rats. All right, from French Polynesia to Bolivia, where we literally find mercury rising, why Bolivia remains South America's hub for the toxic trade and considering uh, <laughs> how much mercury is pouring into South America, you know, to, what an honor. Bolivia is one of the few countries in South America yet to ban the import of the toxic chemical mercury facilitating its use in illegal mining throughout the region. And anyone who believes that mercury is not pouring into Brazil and Peru and Venezuela and Colombia and, and everywhere else. Anyway, uh, an October UN report highlighted Bolivia's high rate of mercury imports which has polluted entire watersheds in the country and poisoned animals and indigenous communities alike. Okay, you know, I love it when they ask a question in a headline because I have to admit, I, I pulled a little bit of a book hermit. When I was reading this story, about the collapse of snow crabs up there in Alaska, you know, where they're wondering where, like, what was it, a billion, where have a billion snow crabs disappeared off the planet in the past couple of years? You know, they had to shut down the fishery. And uh, we have a debate forming. In October, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced that the lucrative snow crab fishery in the Bering Sea would close for the first time following a population decline of 80% between 2018 and 2022, while fisheries managers and biologists say climate change is to blame, you know, for the collapse of the crab population. Some, you know, crab fishermen and crab expert suggest that trawling bycatch and other fishing activity may have played a role in the snow crab's decline. And what they're talking about, you know, with this or these giant, uh, and I'm no fan of snow crab fishing, okay? I don't eat seafood. I think we get it that I don't eat snow crab. I absolutely love snow crab and every other kind of, I don't eat crabs anymore. But uh, I am no fan of any crab fishing, but what they're talking about, you know, me coming to defense of crab fishermen, is that uh, they're, they're talking about these giant industrial sized trawlers, you know, mainly from China that come through and scrape up everything and, and, and just dump all of, you know, the vast majority of the stuff they get, uh, they just dump out back into the ocean, dead animals. And uh, the crab fishermen and some crab Experts are suggesting that is where those billion crabs are. Uh, the fisheries closure has amplified a chorus of concerns about Alaska's trawling industry and the knowledge gaps around its potential impact on other fisheries. So uh, once again, this is one of those things that I call this is not an either or, it's a both and and everything else. These are all, you know, ingredients in the toxic stew taking down a planet. It is the trawlers, it is climate change, and it is the crab fishermen themselves. And there's probably six other things in there that I haven't thought of. You know, some people would say it's Fukushima. Now, 
sometimes I don't like it when they ask a question in a headline. You know, uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, and I guess uh, this week their video, which I have not watched and probably won't, because I don't want to know that, because we know the answer. What is the environmental impact of chocolate? Well, the environmental impact is probably a bunch of dead baby gorillas and chimpanzees and pangolins and uh, everything else. Uh, I would like to say I don't eat chocolate. I just bought a big old tub of chocolate ice cream. Chocolate almond ice cream, no less. Anyway, we all know what the environmental impact of chocolate is. It's like the environmental of it, impact of everything else humans stick in our greedy mouths. All right. I, I love... <laughs> you know, sometimes all you, 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 know, you look at these, uh, at these fights going on Indonesia <coughs> claims that the European <coughs> Union is, quote, moving the goalpost with new timber requirement. In 2011, Indonesia began the process of ensuring that its timber exports to the European Union met strict, strict legality verification, verification standards which the EU duly recognized in 2016. You know, you change the name illegal deforestation to legal deforestation. But now, a new bill threatens to undermine this, progr this progress by revoking the Green Lane access for imports of Indonesian timber and subjecting them to additional checks for deforestation links. Imagine that uh, you, you get a container ship full of logs from uh, Indonesia and you're looking for some additional checks for deforestation links as you're unloading a giant tanker of logs from Southeast Asia. You know, legal logs. This is Arf Oregon Senso, uh, an Indonesian ambassador, quote, you can't suddenly just change your mind by saying, I'm not willing to accept Indonesian timber products because they are not sustainable enough. Well, I got some bad news for you, Arif. You, you, you damn well can change your mind by saying I'm not willing to accept this planet-eating crap because they're not sustainable at all. But of course, they're not going to stop importing the logs. This is all going to get ironed out and all of these container ships full of logs are the sustainable, the sustainable legal container ships full of logs pouring out of uh, Southeast Asia and Brazil and the Congo, going to the EU, the U.S., and of course China, uh, which is, I'm sure, dwarfs the market in the EU and the U.S. combined. Uh, nothing's going to change. We all know it. Yes. Indonesia is threatening to take the matter to the World Trade Organization, a move that other tropical forest countries, including Brazil and Ghana, have also hinted at. Yeah, take it to the UN, to the World Trade Organization. Take your little complaints that your planet-eating container ships full of dead sustainable logs from uh, Indonesia, Brazil, and Ghana. Uh, anyway, give me a break, as John Stossel would say. 
What's going on with palm trees here in 2022? More than half of palm species may be threatened with extinct, extinction, study finds. Um, researchers have found that of the 1,889 species of palm trees with enough data to even investigate, more than half, otherwise known as 56%, may now be threatened with extinction. Yep, yep, yep. The study found that nearly half of the functionally distinct species of palm were threatened, as well as nearly one-third of palm species used by humans. Like many other threatened plant and animal species, the greatest risk to palms is habitat destruction from agriculture, uh, you know, such as oil palm expansion and urban expansion, otherwise known the, like many, like all other threatened plant, like 100% of the other threatened plant and animal species, the greatest risk to palms is humans. I didn't uh, mention this uh, story a few weeks back about the, the man of the hole. The man of the hole who is the last uh, member of a uh, of a an indigenous noble savage tribe down there in the Brazilian Amazon died. I guess he was like living in a hole for 20 years trying to hide from the planet eaters. So uh, anyway, you know, they had this big area of forest around him waiting around for him to die. Well, he died. And uh, it's kind of ironic that the man of the holes delayed burial reveals dispute. You know, the, the, the dude is living in a hole for, uh, for 26 years, living in a hole, and then he dies, and then they delay his burial. Anyway, you, you've got to have an ironic sense of humor. Um, he has still not been buried three months after his death. Um, critics accuse Funai's president of working in favor of local agribusiness interest by deliberately stalling the man of the hole's funeral to help farmers claim the rights to the land, the, de the delay of, you know, putting him back in the hole that he lived in for 26 years was partly due to a debate over what will happen to the land where the man lived, which is now covered in rainforest and is currently protected by a, by a restriction of use until 2025. Um... The Federal Public Ministry and Amazon activists call for the land to be permanently preserved while local farmers claim they are the owners of the land and demand the restrictions be revoked to allow for agricultural expansion. We will see how uh, this plays out under Lula now that Bozo Nero is on his way out. Okay, here's a story, although you wouldn't know it by reading this, about Jevon's paradox. Although you're never going to hear Jevon, maybe somewhere in the full story. But I don't have time to get into it. But anyway, LED lights could contribute to massive carbon reduction. Yes. The world has been shifting away from wasteful incandescent and harmful fluorescent lights and increasingly adopting LED technology, 
which promises to reduce carbon emissions. Yet, <clears throat> despite widespread adoption of the technology, virtually no LEDs are currently recycled or reused for their parts. Uh, so anyway, I, I've uh, had this rant before about LED lights are an absolutely perfect. I am, I am as guilty of it as anybody. I could open the door to this tiny house and, and show you all of these strings of LED, solar powered LED lights that uh, they're, they're so damn cheap, uh, you know, coming out of China, these things, that people are buying 10 times as many lights as they would have bought before. And, and, this, and, and this LED light, uh, good, I mean, mountains, especially, you know, going into a Christmas where, where every house has about 1,200 miles uh, uh, of these made in China toxic pieces of crap. You know, they last uh, a season, maybe two. They end up in the landfill. Uh, it, it's it just, just one more. Uh, I am as guilty as anybody. Well, not on Christmas lights, but I, I, I have them 365 days a year. Gee. The World Wildlife Fund, didn't they just do a report called the Dying Planet Report? Well, now I guess they have a brand new report, like a subset of the whole planet. A new report from the World Wildlife Fund called the Dying Amazon Report warns that threats to the Amazon have gotten worse in recent years and could result in the disappearance of the rainforest if more drastic action is not taken. So according to the World Wildlife Fund, this is how they are reading it, they're claiming that 18% of the Amazon is gone, has been completely obliterated off the face of the planet, and that another 17% are highly degraded. So 35%, according to the Dying Amazon report, is uh, either highly degraded, meaning gone in the next couple of years, or already obliterated off the face of the planet. If more drastic action is not taken, the report said the biome could transition from forest to Savannah, do you think so? And it could push global warming above the safe threshold of one and a half C. I have some bad news for the World Wildlife Fund. The Amazon rainforest has nothing to do with this BS one and a half degree thing at this point. This planet has probably already busted through it. If the Amazon was 100% intact or 100% gone, uh, that ship has sailed. I'm trying to, anyway, we're traipsing on a, we are traipsing on a dog and pony stuff. Gee. Can you imagine that village, villagers in Sumatra are having a fight with a palm oil company? Okay, of course, they have some uh, stuff about the dog and pony show. Uh, what's going on in Peru this week? as gangs battle over Peru's drug trafficking routes, communities and forests are at risk. Along the Peruvian and Colombian border, armed gangs, formerly part of, you know, the FARC guerrillas out of Colombia, are now seeking control of the Putumayo River, 
a region inhabited by at least uh, nobles, at least 25 noble savage communities. The river is also the site of two important drug trafficking routes. One to Brazil, which goes on to Europe and Asia, and the other to Mexico and on to the United States. The armed groups frequently take part in illegal gold mining on the Putumayo to finance their activities simultaneously contaminating the river, fish, and people who live in the border area. Some community members, you know, indigenous community members certainly by force mm -hmm, engage in illegal businesses by deforesting areas, planting coca, and transporting prohibited items. Okay, here is one, uh, you know, somewhere between the hopium and the, B, and the BS uh, detected button getting slammed. Uh, mangrove forest loss is slowing toward a halt. New report shows. Yes. This is from the Global Mangrove Alliance, a consortium of NGOs published the state of the world's mangroves. Yes, the report shows a decline in the overall rate of mangrove loss and outlines concrete actions to halt the loss of mangroves for good and help mangroves begin regaining ground. Now, I haven't gone on to the, uh, read the whole story, but whenever I read these stories about, and, and I'm all for restoring mangroves, but you know, there, there seems to me that this is just me, okay? I don't know, am I the only person on the world, in, in the world, who reads these stories uh, about the you know mangrove restoration and wonders what's going to happen when the sea levels rise and, and you know and swallow the mangroves you know look out there at, at western australia where good god how many thousands and thousands of acres ha of mangroves have been destroyed by uh cl climate change and sea level rise go right down here to uh everglades national park if you want to see mangroves uh, dying from sea level rise. I I anyway, there, there seems to be some sort of disconnect that either someone doesn't get it, could be me. All right. Would you believe that in Brazil's soy belt, indigenous people face attacks? Well, again, I, I can't use this term indigenous people. There are no indigenous people in the Western Hemisphere. There is no such thing as an indigenous person in the Western Hemisphere. So let's re, let's start. Uh, correcting this, in Brazil's soy belt, the first Asian invader people face attacks over land rights. In Brazil's Mato Grosso do Sul state, Garanji Kiowa, original Asian invading people, seeking to reclaim their ancestral lands have been subjected to threats and violence by farmers and security forces. Do you think so? Uh, you know, talking about... Uh, we have one uh, dead, nine others injured. Good Lord, the violence has continued. 
as now in July and September, two more were killed with original invader residents blaming farming interest for the deaths. Okay, good. You know, every once in a while, I, you know, I try to put my uh, curmudgeonly, you know, good for this uh, Francis Macron. Francis Macaroni joins growing chorus calling for deep sea mining ban. On November 8th, French President Emmanuel Macaroni became the first head of state to call for a complete ban on deep sea mining, an activity that would extract industrial quantities of minerals from the seabed in international waters in the near future. Uh, delegates of the International Seabed Authority are currently meeting in Jamaica to discuss deep sea mining regulations and many member states are using the forum to express their concerns about deep sea mining going ahead. That's exactly what it's going to do. All right, here is another associated story about illegal gold mining and all of that mercury contamination in the Bolivian Amazon. In the northern regions, uh, in the Department of La Paz, Bolivia, illegal gold mining has led to widespread deforestation and mercury pollution. The Bolivian Amazon, including protect protected areas like Medidi National Park, face a growing risk of environmental destruction in the years to come from this ever expanding industry. The investigation found that miners take advantage of the government's lack of resources and slow-moving bureaucracy to avoid accountability for the harm they do to the environment. They also rely on illegal backdoor agreements with well-funded foreign investors to maximize production. Uh, we have more dog and pony show, more noble savage original Asian invaders. Alright, gee, what a surprise. This has turned into my annual broken record rant for November. Negotiations to conserve Antarctic Ocean end in stalemate once again on many issues. The 41st annual meeting of the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, like the 40th meeting, and the 39th meeting, and the 38th meeting, and the 37th meeting, blah, 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 ended with little progress made on key issues. In 2009, the Commission committed to creating a network of marine protected areas to preserve Antarctic ecosystems. It established a grand total of one that year and one more in 2016. But since, since 2016, for the past six years now, China and Russia have repeatedly blocked the creation of additional protected areas as well as other conservation related measures. The Commission also failed to reach consensus required to enact new regulations for the krill fisheries or to protect a vast nesting area for ice fish discovered earlier this year. There you go. 
Okay, it sounds like Manga Bay is climbing on the seaweed farming to save the planet bandwagon. I hope not asking the question this week, can seaweed cultivation help fix the climate crisis? The question, can seaweed, the answer to the question, can seaweed cultivation help fix the climate crisis? is no, it cannot. Yeah, uh, we got more dog and pony. All right. Will CITES, no, C-I-T-E-S, this is the other dog and pony show coming up, but instead of climate change, this is this BS biodiversity thing coming up. Uh, this is COP19. So basically, will whoever CITES really is finally act to protect Rosewood this month? The answer, will Rosewood finally be protected during COP19 this month is no, it will not. I love this hilarious headline. Growing soy on cattle pastures can eliminate Amazon deforestation in Brazil. Expanding soy cultivation into underutilized cattle pasture would help prevent massive deforestation and carbon emissions compared to the current practice of clearing new forests for farmland. Hmm. Experts say that Brazil, which is the world's number one soy producer and beef exporter, exporter has enough pasture land lying around unused that would allow soy production to increase by more than one-third without any further deforestation. Researchers warn that if Brazil continues with its current method of soy cultivation, it will end up clearing about 14 million acres of Amazon rainforest and Cerrado savanna into cropland over the next 15 years. Pretty much 1 million acres per year. Uh, getting bulldozed for soy production. Uh, I love this. Environmentalists have welcomed intensifying agriculture as a solution to deforestation, but have raised concerns about the potential for increased pesticide use, biodiversity loss, and the expansion of new cattle ranching into forested areas. So anyway, this headline, Growing Soy on Cattle Pasture, can eliminate Amazon deforestation in Brazil it has nothing to do with anything I just read is complete unadulterated horseshit on the face of it. I know this, Sancho Panza knows this, Rhett Butler sure as hell knows that growing soy on cattle pasture will not in any way, shape, or form eliminate Amazon deforestation in Brazil. That, 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 that's a flat out, bold faced lie. Rep Butler, I love your brother, but you know it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for approving that headline. All right, here's their little miniature uh, sub-Saharan African uh, roundup. 
what's going on in the sub-Saharan African notes? Okay. South Africa's Minister of Mines has approved a new platinum mine in the Vihembe Biosphere Reserve Protected Area. Huh. Despite objections from a farming community who's probably already in the biosphere preserve cutting down all the trees. We were here first destroying the protected areas. You can't have it because we want it to destroy. Anyway, <clears throat> the end of a government-funded program to incentivize parents in the Democratic Republic of the Congo to keep their children in school has seen more than 250 children returning to working in cobalt mines. But it is a different story in Kenya's Makaweni County, where strong local regulations are keeping children and criminal elements out of the sand mining industry. The sand mining industry is a criminal element. How can you keep the, a criminal element out of an industry that is in and of itself a criminal element, but since I realize I am talking to myself and I think my drink is done, we're going to wind up with a question. Okay, I have had a couple of rants about this unadulterated horse shit thing called carbon offsets. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to close. I'm going to let you answer the question. Are carbon offsets a key tool for climate action or are carbon offsets a license to emit? And I think if you if you are having trouble answering that question, obviously I have been having a failure to communicate. We all know the answer to the question. Rhett Butler knows the answer as well as you do and I do. It's time for Manga Bay to cut the crap defending one of the biggest bright green lies of the 21st century. But with that, uh, I need to freshen my drink and uh, beat it up the hill to the other tiny house before the monsoon gets here in a few minutes. My guys, what do you think, little dog? Are you ready to run up and beat the monsoon? How the hell did we go 43 minutes on that? Good lord. Bye, guys.